Jesus. Good straight right hand. From Salinas, California, the undefeated WBO number one ranked junior lightweight challenger in the world, Eloy the Prince Perez. From Cincinnati, Ohio, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBO junior lightweight champion of the world, Adrian the Problem Browner. From Cincinnati, okay, and now gentlemen, the introductions. You got your instructions. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck to you. Perez coming off two knockout wins. That's not part of his resume. He's been down twice in his career. Interesting to see how Perez deals. Well, it's shocking because when you look at it on tape, it looks like. Broner in his last fight used a right uppercut to hurt. Landed 41% of his power shots in that fight, according to CompuBox. And Elon is looking good early. He has nothing guy who comes here, who he takes care of a lot of people he has that are depending on him. So he's coming to try to perform. I think this is the first time that I ever almost wanted to cry in the fight. Yeah, um, you saw that uh, young boy in the cancer. And the Perez team befriended him. Took a big left hook by Broner. Justin Gills is seen by some as a real boxer, but Roy Ponce de Leon showed some flaws in his boxing game. What do you, you know, he, he has good boxing skills. His shoulder guard, he has a really good defense with his shoulders, and it's very difficult for fighters to hit him. That's the big thing, and he has quick hands and power to go with it. Broner reached and then slipped. Perez. But Perez took it really good. That's what's surprising. Because he's missing his career, but he took a good, a good ball on Puts together combination and does attack the body. Perez didn't show up to lay down. No, not at all. Perez seems very relaxed in there here in round one. What you don't like is the taller fighter back and the shorter fighter up. When he throws that shit jab, go friend. right in, right off okay. his jab. PC agent brought a lead with a beautiful left hook. He fainted the jab and led with left hook and landed right on the nose. Great punch. Oh, he's fighting a defensive fight, okay? But he took the shot right, very go. good. Broner landed 10 of his 42 punches in that round. Five of them were power kicks. As I was saying at the end of that last round, is I don't like Perez backing up from, from Broner so much to back up. He's going to run into that Broner right hand, and that might not be a good thing for Perez. As you mentioned, he has some real boxing skills. He's younger than most of them. Broner steps in with some of his... He's using that jab very good with his brothers. Good hook by him. Rez fights out of the corner. Gets away from some danger. And he's very calm and relaxed right here. This is where you see a little bit of the experience factor. When a guy has been in this situation, he's always relaxed, even though it's not uh, his control completely right now. I mean, he's winning, but he's not totally controlled yet because he hasn't broken Eloy's will yet. Too much in front of Broner, where Broner's able to get that jab and get the range going. Yes, he's he backing up from a taller fighter. This allows the taller fighter to use the jab, and that's it. So it puts Eloy in a defensive position at all times, mentally and physically. So as you see, Eloy starting to breathe hard because he's not. He came, fighting. he came here to give it all he has. He'll take a lot away from this fight when he comes out. About the learning curve in terms of Broner's boxing skills. Well, they trade big shots. Broner's had a better effect. Perez hurt on a right to the ear. Trying to fight his way out at the end. Listen up. What we do when he come in, you understand? Uppercut. Turn it on and stay on him and don't rush the shots. You hear me? What we do? Underneath. He's not going up top. He's too little. One power shots in that round, 48% as he was accurate. Gotta love the effort by Perez. He also landed a big left hook late in that round. Well, I like the way Michael Stafford in the corner of Broner took over at the end of that round. He told everybody else, I don't want to hear any talk. Shut up. Let me talk to the man. Especially after his fighter just had Yeah, because 
he, he was critical of the end of that round because he felt Broner was rushing things. That's right. He's excited. It could also excite the fighter. Well, one thing we're seeing here is, you know, Perez talked about he was better with his feet. Not at all, because they found out that, like, like I was saying earlier, Broner is not as bad with his feet as they think he's he wide with it, but but he can move them. That's exactly right. That hurt. Left hand hurt. Perez pointing to the back, but I think it hit him pretty flush. Right Broner. hand from Broner. Broner out with his play. upper body a lot, not needing to move out of range. That's exactly right. He uses his shoulders and his upper body for defense more so than anything else. Oh, no, and no, I tell you right, this is the difference when you step up to an elite class fighter. You're used to being a, uh, the top dog, as they call it. But when you get in with an elite confidence. As Broner pointed out, heading into the fight, look, this is a junior lightweight who punches like a featherweight, and I'm a junior lightweight who punches like a middleweight. No, 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 no. But his record doesn't indicate that he's much of a Right, punch. in recent fights, he's right. brought the power. Right. Tell him right into the second one. Wide enough with his punches that allow Broner straighter punches to get in there. Yeah, well, he's allowing Broner to stay in punching range because he's by allowing Broner to come forward all the time like that, Broner stays in punching range. So he should be closing. As a shorter fighter, you have to try to get tall, closer to the taller fighter. Does he need to double his jab? Work double and triple. Found out, he's found out he can't punch Broner in the face. The only target for him right now is Broner's body, and Broner covers up his body pretty well. Yes, he does. And he camouflages very well. He's he's not. But see that pressure he got on him right now? The pressure being right there in his face. That's a bad feeling for a young fighter being never been in this class before. Good right hand by Broner. Perez tries to respond at the end of round. So throw the right down low. Okay. And come back with the left hook. Okay. And get out in more feints and more jabs and you're out a long range. Him. And that's the kind of commitment that he has towards the ringside fan. score. Okay, but let me ask you a question. Who do you know that beat Adrian Broner standing right? Eloy Perez is standing right in front of him for three rounds. 3 oh, and oh, nothing, oh, 30 oh, to oh, 27, Adrian Broner. So that when Perez fires back, Broner's not there. Watch that. That's absolutely fantastic, the way Broner does it. I love that Wait stuff. till round 11 when he's hacked with sweat, blood, and DNA. He's going to wish he didn't have him. Makes you think we'll be here in round 11. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you saw the showmanship of Broner, too, as he got into that clinch with Perez. and Step around Broner and use what he thinks is Broner, just his demonstrated to him. It doesn't matter how wide, wide his stance is. He is. Yeah, and like I said, the biggest thing for Broner is he's keeping his pressure. He's not giving him space or room to breathe. And, that, and Perez is not used to that. He's never fought a fighter to keep this kind of pressure on him, I guarantee you. He's complied by just staying right there yes, and not he doing has. something different. In, yes, in the pocket, has. right in front of uh, a big puncher, you don't do that either. But like I told you, this is why I say he'll take some great eight. When he walked to the ring, Kevin Cunningham, who's the lead trainer for Devin Alexander, said, I got to walk with my nephew when he's in town. He's like a nephew to me. He's developing a fan base here in St. Louis. Good straight right hand and down goes Perez. Two, three, four, five. And he's not going to make it. That's a spectacular performance. Yes, it was. I know Perez is not, doesn't have a lot of knockouts on his record. I know he's a smaller guy, but he's a skillful world-class fighter. Broner just did whatever he wanted and knocked him out in spectacular fashion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the contest comes to an end at 2 minutes 24 seconds of round number four. The winner by knockout victory, Adrian, the problem, Broner. Well, no problems for the problem against Eloy Perez, who suffers his first loss of his career. And I get my hair brushed, I wipe my eyebrows, and I go to work. And at the end of the day, I'm still looking like this, fresh, fly, flashy.